In this video, we're going to focus in on the reactions of Bronsted acids and bases with water. Aqueous solutions of Bronsted acids and bases are obviously of great practical importance, and water is really interesting from the perspective of bronsted lowry acid base theory because it can act as both an acid or a base. It's what we refer to as amphoteric or amphiprotic. So in this video, we're going to define some key equilibrium constants that give us a sense of acid or base strength and see how these relate to the reactions of acids and bases with water in aqueous solution. First, let's focus on the reactions of acids with water. And the specific acid examined on this slide is HF, hydrofluoric acid. HF has a single hydrogen atom. And when that hydrogen is transferred as a proton to water, the proton ends up right here, and the products are H3O plus and F minus. Notice that H3O plus is the conjugate acid of H2O. So the base H2O and the acid H3O plus form a conjugate pair. And likewise, fluoride is the conjugate base of HF, differs from HF by the loss of a proton. So there's a second conjugate pair reinforcing this idea that in any proton transfer reaction, we've got conjugate pairs on either side of the forward or reversible arrow. One other thing to notice here about the conjugate acid of water, H3O+. This is a very important ion known as the hydronium ion. And it's important really in all aqueous solutions, but especially in aqueous solutions of acids where it's in relatively high concentration. We'll see this ion again when we talk about the self-ionization of water, returning to this idea that water can react with itself in a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction. But for the time being, let's focus in on the reaction of hydrofluoric acid with water. This is the most important reaction that HF engages in in aqueous solution because the concentration of water in an aqueous solution is massive. So HF is constantly colliding with water molecules. Let's fill in the phases here really quick because this is going to become important. The HF is dissolved, it's aqueous, but the water is pure liquid. H3O plus is an aqueous ion and F minus is aqueous as well. We'll see why that's important here in one second. The other thing to notice about this reaction, which may differ from your previous exposure to acids and bases, is that the reaction is reversible. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid, meaning it reacts only partially with water at equilibrium. Unlike, for example, strong acids you may have seen previously, which react completely with water. Because this is a reversible reaction, it has a K value, an equilibrium constant that is not infinite, that we can use to characterize the reaction. How far does it go at equilibrium? K gives us a qualitative, and in many cases, quantitative idea about this. The particular equilibrium constant for the reaction of an acid with water is known as K sub A, and that's called the acidity constant or the acid ionization constant. And Ka has a fairly consistent form because all acid ionization reactions in aqueous solutions have the same basic form with the acid on the reactant side, the conjugate base on the product side, hydronium on the product side, and water on the reactant side. So here, for example, in this, react in this uh, reaction of HF with water, we can write the form of Ka as follows. Ka is equal to, just as we've seen for equilibrium constants many times already, we have the products in the numerator and the reactants in the denominator. H3O plus, hydronium ion, is a product, and F minus, fluoride anion, is a product. And in the denominator, we have HF, the acid, and water is omitted. And why is water omitted? Well, notice it's a pure liquid in the chemical equation. And as a pure liquid, just as we would, would in reaction quotients back a couple of chapters ago, we're going to omit that from the reaction quotient and the equilibrium expression. And so this ratio at equilibrium is K sub A. And this gives us a sense of how strong the acid is, right? The larger this value, the stronger the acid, because the further to the right, the further toward products, this reaction goes at equilibrium. Now let's consider what happens when we take a base and dissolve it in water. Now we have a proton that's built into water that is transferred, let me actually do this one, this proton is transferred to the base and the result is the conjugate acid of the base 
and the conjugate base of water. So let's highlight the conjugate pairs again. Here we have pyridine is the base, and its conjugate acid is known as pyridinium. This is one of the conjugate pairs. And we have water, and we have the conjugate base of water, which is OH minus, or the hydroxide anion. So two conjugate pairs, just as we'd expect. And notice here again that this reaction is reversible. We've got a reversible reaction arrow right here. The reaction does not go to completion at equilibrium. Pyridine is an example of a weak Bronsted base. And just like we did for the acid ionization case, we can talk about a base ionization constant, capital K sub B, and this is the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Just as we did in the acid case, let's add the phases, actually. So water, still a pure liquid. Pyridine is in aqueous solution. Pyridinium, also in aqueous solution. And OH minus is an aqueous ion. And so we can write the form of Kb using ideas about reaction quotients we've seen previously with products in the numerator and reactants in the denominator. Writing OH minus, let's put that first. The order doesn't matter, of course, but let's go ahead and put that first. And then the conjugate acid on the product side here, C5 in H6 plus is our other product and also appears in the numerator. And in the denominator, we omit water for the exact same reason we did in the acid ionization case and just write the concentration of the base, C5 and H5. Here, so this is the form of K sub B for pyridinium. And something I'll, I'll point out now, just to generalize, is you can imagine that if we were dealing with a general weak base, let's just call it B, these weak bases are, are often neutral, you can imagine that what we would see in the numerator would be HB plus right here. And going back to the acid ionization case, you think about a general acid HA, general neutral acid HA, what we would see in the numerator would be A minus here. And actually, just as we saw in the acid ionization case, I want to emphasize that these concentrations are all at equilibrium. Now, Bronsted acid-base reactions come to equilibrium very quickly, so we typically don't worry about reaction quotients and just think of the system at equilibrium after a very short time duration. But just to emphasize and reinforce what we know about equilibrium constants, these are all equilibrium concentrations. And again, this particular constant is known as the base ionization or basicity constant for the base B. And it's a measure of the base strength, right? The larger this value is, the further to the product side the reaction goes at equilibrium, and the stronger the base, the higher the hydroxide concentration at equilibrium is another way to think about this.